Hi everyone, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So much happened in the pageant industry while I was away that it looks like there's been a major shift in the Indian pageant industry and I'm here to talk about it. While I may not have been showing up on camera as frequently as I used to earlier, that doesn't mean that I haven't been keeping an eye on and watching the pageant space very, very closely. And in fact, time has only given me more opportunity to have deeper insights on what I think of the changes in the pageant industry. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, or if you live under a rock, there's been a major shift in the Indian pageant system and just a few days ago, we received official news that the Miss Universe India franchisee is no longer owned by the Miss Diva pageant, which existed for years now. And in fact, the new ownership of the franchisee has been taken by Glamanan Supermodel India, which is actually owned by Nikhil Anand. And it's interesting to note that this year, Glamanan Supermodel India has not just purchased the franchisee of Miss Universe India, but they also got the ownership of Miss Charm as well as Miss Asia Pacific. So GSI definitely seems to be on a roll. There's been mixed reactions to this news on social media posts in the comment section. And I have my two cents to share about that because there have been so many questions flooding my inbox. And in fact, the question of how is it going to affect the contestants preparation approach? How does it affect the judging criteria? What do you think is there for the future of the Miss Universe India pageant? These questions have come up so frequently in the last one week or so in a lot of the clarity sessions that were in fact booked just to ask about this particular topic that I decided to make a video about it. My personal opinion on the change that has taken place with Glamman and Supermodel India owning the franchisee of Miss Universe India now is only a positive change. But that's also because I am a glass half full person. I'm an extremely optimistic person. I look for the good in people and I also like to trust people and expect and hope the best from them unless they give me a reason to believe otherwise. And so for me, this major change is just as natural as the change of seasons because change is inevitable. Now, before we start concerning ourselves with whether or not GSI will be able to handle and carry forward the legacy that Miss Diva had created, the reason why so many fans were such big followers of the Miss Universe India pageant, one, I believe that more than the organization, it's the legacy that the women who competed and won the title and what they did with the title is what created the brand. And moreover, Glamour and Supermodel India is not an organization that is absolutely new to the industry. In fact, they have a total of nine years of experience. It was in 2015 that a 19-year-old Nikhil Anand started the organization. And one rule that I follow in all professional aspects is I do not work with how big or small an organization is. I believe that I work with the person running the organization. And in this particular case, for me personally, it's Nikhil Anand, his ambition, his drive, his consistent performance over the years, and how much Glam Anand Supermodel India has grown under his reign is what makes me believe in this decision. And that's what fills me with hope and a positive outlook towards the new version of Miss Universe India in whichever form that might be. If you've been following pageants in India closely, you would have noticed that in the last two years specifically, the production level of the pageants organized by Glamour and Supermodel India was noteworthy. I mean, I would say it was better, if not comparable, to some of the national level pageants that were being produced and hosted. Now, if you're someone who is planning to compete at Miss Diva, which is now called Miss Universe India in this year or in the coming years, then keep watching till the end of the video because I'm going to share all of the impact that will come in and how as a contestant you need to be prepared better and what you need to be aware of. But before I dive into the changes that we can expect from a contestant perspective, I also want to tell everyone about the statement that Miss Diva issued because there seems to be a lot of misinformation circulating around as well. And Miss Diva made a statement that said, 
We believe in the power of the Miss Universe and the fact that it has been a well-reputed and respected pageant. However, given the background of uncertainty where the owner JKN Group is under investigation and owing to a lawsuit, plus the lack of transparency on the business engagements and a few more reasons is why Miss Diva has chosen to abstain this year from competitive pitching for the license and they hope to be able to get back and win the license for India once again in the future. So if you are one of these Diva fans, then maybe there is hope for you in the future as well. But at the same time, I would say that as Indian pageant fans and all of us who are involved in the journey of all of these beautiful women who have this dream of representing India, our job as fans, as pageant reviewers, bloggers, whatever category you fall in, is to support those women, their ambitions and their dreams and to live by the fact that it's about how you respond to a situation. If a major change such as this, which is so natural and inevitable in business in general, I would say, if that can shake you so much, then how are you going to compete at a pageant? What this statement issued by Diva also means is that the franchisee was not stolen or snatched by Nikhilanand, as some people were saying, which is absolutely incorrect and untrue, but rather Nikhilanand nearly just bought the franchisee to an international pageant which was available for sale like any smart businessman would. While I agree that there is a lot happening at Miss Universe and there is plenty of uncertainty with respect to that pageant which I will talk about in another video separately but I do say that I admire the risk-taking nature and the drive of the owner of Glamman and Supermodel India. Now if you are an aspiring pageant contestant this part of the video is extremely important for you. With such a major change in the shift of the ownership of the pageant franchisee, there are obviously some changes that contestants should expect. One of the major changes that I feel as someone who has been following pageants for years now is that the Times Talent contract, which used to be a part of the Miss Diva participation journey, will no longer exist because as far as I know, Glamour and Supermodel India at the moment does not restrict or bound their finalists with certain contracts just because of the fact that they are not a talent agency whereas times talent is an inevitable part of competitions such as miss india and miss diva so that is a change that contestants can hope to see the contracts with times talent would vary from three years to five or sometimes seven years and whether this is a good or a bad change i would say only time will tell and it really is a personal choice some people like the fact that they get a contract with Times Talent, whereas some contestants who were previously signed with other modeling agencies might not feel the same way. And so it's up to you as to how you take that change. The second change, which makes me very excited to see how Miss Universe India as a pageant is conducted by GSI this year, is also the fact that they seem to have a lot of international connections and contacts especially when it comes to wardrobe planning. Arshina Sumbul, when she represented India at Miss Grand Internationals just last year, had an amazing wardrobe. The Vietnamese designers that were a part of her wardrobe planning process were incredible. And that is something that is a fresh change. And I would say I haven't seen that happening at Miss Diva lately because of the repetition of the designers that were involved in the gown making processes. And so we definitely will be able to see new visuals, new colors, new designs, just because of how differently the organization works. One of the biggest plus points that are going to happen for contestants if you're planning to compete at this pageant this year is earlier if you were a contestant at say Miss India and it turns out that the organization doesn't like you, maybe you're not their type, maybe they're just looking for a different kind of girl. For the longest time we've seen that the decision-making people behind Femina Miss India and Miss Diva are the exact same set of people. And so the disadvantage to a lot of girls would be that if they weren't preferred or if they're not the organization's pick at Femina Miss India, their chances of being So if I were a contestant, what I would be doing right now is researching about the organization, trying to understand how they're different from Femina or Diva, and just understanding what they're looking for in a contestant, even though it's an entirely different title, obviously they will have a different 
set of criteria because this girl has to represent India at universe and not grand and there are differences between those pageants and the kind of personas that you know a national director would pick for uh, that international pageant but at the same time there are some things that a person looks for in another ambassador or spokesperson for their organization and so that's the kind of effort I would be putting into it and at the same time understand that the end goal is still the same you still get to represent India at Miss Universe. Another change that I'm looking forward to see as to how the new franchisee owner handles is the grooming of the international delegates. We have seen the intensive grooming sessions provided by Miss Diva to their international delegates for years now. However, it seems as if with Glamour and Supermodi India, there's always been very little time left for the international delegates to prepare and go to represent India, which is amazing. In fact, ever since in 2020, Glamour and Supermodi India was able to send Simran Sharma to Miss Grand International with very little time for preparation. I became a fan of the organization and the fact that she performs so beautifully with such little time goes on to show that the potential is definitely there when it comes to the GSI organization. However, we have not so far seen them train an international delegate or at least I haven't been able to notice it as much in the last couple of years where the delegate trains for almost a year and that's also because of how the pageant timelines have been seriously impacted ever since COVID. Um, delegates get an inconsistent amount of time to prepare for the international platform. However, now that the ownership has been transferred, we have time for the pageant. Depending on when the finale for Miss Universe India happens, I would be really interested to see as to the preparation and the investment that goes into the Miss Universe India title holder this year. The next thing, which is an important point for contestants to note, if you are planning to compete at Miss Universe India this year, is the registration fee. So far, the registration fee charged by organizations like Miss Diva has always been under rupees 5,000. However, from my knowledge, Glamour and Supermodel India has been charging a registration fee of 35,000. And they may continue the same registration fee for the Miss Universe India pageant as well, which in the pageant world is a pretty reasonable pageant registration fee for the kind of pageant organization that they are. But it is going to be a difference to the contestants who were so far paying a different registration fee altogether to the Miss Diva organization. So from a competing perspective, it's a financial change that you need to be aware of. And the last thing that I would want all of you to know is something that Nikhil Anand himself posted on his stories that the prelims and the national costume for both Miss Grand International and Miss Universe India, the two franchises that Laman and Supermodel India holds currently, apart from the other franchises that they already have, are going to happen together. Whereas the finale for Miss Universe India and Grand are going to be conducted separately. Now, I don't really know how they're going to do it. This is all I saw on his Instagram stories, but I am very, very eager and curious to see how they plan and execute this new version of pageants this year. So those are my thoughts and insights on how the change of ownership of the franchisee of Miss Universe India will affect the Indian pageant industry. I hope you guys found this video super helpful and if you have any further questions or would like to book a session with me for an elaborate conversation, get a roadmap to your pageant preparation, then the link to book a clarity session is in the description box below as always. With that being said, I love you guys so so much and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!